Let the record reflect we have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I ask you to remain standing after the pledge. Tony was born in Morristown, July 4th, 1943, and she was raised in Madison, lifelong resident. And she and her husband, Joe, opened CJ's Deli in 1970, and it certainly a major part of Madison. The couple operated until they sold in 2001, and now their nephew, Johnny Blair, is keeping the tradition alive. Tony leaves her beloved husband, Joe, of 52 years, two daughters, Karen and Tanya, her three sisters, Joe Blair, Mary Galano, and Lucille Fritz. So let's have a moment of silence and reflection for Tony Shalantio, her family, and for all she touched in Madison. Thank you. Okay, we have no minutes for approval. Welcome all. The five Mondays in May, it's been three weeks since our uh, last meeting, and a lot has uh, happened since uh, the last meeting. Not only in three weeks have we gone from early April weather to late July weather, uh, there's a lot of things else happening. We had um, Memorial Day for the second year in a row. We were unable to have a parade because of the uh, rain. But once again, we had a great ceremony indoors in the uh, courtroom and packed uh, room to recognize those who died for our country. And I want to thank the Patriotic Celebrations Committee for once again doing a great job in keeping memorial in the ceremony. And Carmel, if you can pass our appreciation on to the committee. And we are all pushing for a sunny day next year so you don't have to do it three years in a row. <laughs> On uh, June 1st, I had a great, uh, very positive meeting with uh, several residents that uh, have concerns about the welcoming community resolution. Our attorney, uh, Matthew Giacobbe, will report on that shortly, but I want to thank those. Of, I do see a few in the audience for um, coming out and spending their time that evening and uh, at, asking questions and sharing their concerns. Also happening in the last few weeks is uh, the news from New Jersey Transit. Um, and on Wednesday, May 31st, as we look at Bob Landrigan, who just loves it right now, um, I attended a joint meeting of the Senate, State Senate and Assembly Judiciary Committees, and um, our Assemblyman John McKeon co-hosted the meeting, and he also attended another meeting on June 7th that I went to that was held at the um, New Jersey Transit Operating uh, Headquarters in Kearney. Um, a couple of things I want to cover on these meetings. I did point out to New Jersey Transit at the June 7th meeting, which I have to give him credit for, was very well run. And I thanked him for the years of um, when John Del Coley has been providing support here. He's been a great line of communication. But um, the a meeting on June 7th was about two weeks too late. That as mayor here, I received the news about the cancellation of Midtown Direct Trains the same way most of our Madison residents did, which was through New Jersey uh, media, or New York media, a, a TV station. And as I pointed out that meeting, there's uh, two things on mayor's list that they, we really hate. We hate surprises, <laughs> and we hate things that affect the quality of lives of our, of our residents. And so we shared um, our concerns. A few things that came out of the meetings, the Morris and Essex line, which is our line, is one of the few that can be rerouted to Hoboken that uh, such as the, um, I won't go into the other, I'm drawing a blank on some of the other lines, but some of them cannot go into Hoboken. They, they have to go to uh, Penn Station. From July 10th to September 5th, there will be no weekday Midtown Direct service except for three trains that will arrive 
in Penn Station before 7 a.m. It was announced as four, but that was the fourth train is with an asterisk because the last train is actually, will be one that picks up in Madison. There'll be another one that will pick up further east. And there'll be, um, so there's only three that will pick up in Madison. Um, and you, if you do take those Midtown directs into uh, town, you do have to come back through Hoboken. There is no end of day service through um, Penn Station. The monthly Hoboken ticket will be greatly discounted and will be good to Midtown first few days of July when the Midtown direct is still running. And it's good on even on the three trains if you opt to take one of the three trains into uh, Manhattan. It is a one ticket connection to Manhattan, so uh, path, the ferries and buses will cross on our tickets, but the catch on the return is right now because of logistics, the cross honoring will only happen at 33rd Street. So if you try to get on a Christopher Street or one of the other stations, you will have to pay the fare. New Jersey Transit is expecting 70% of the normal summer load going to Hoboken. Figures the other 30% will be looking at other ways to uh, get to town, get to Midtown. So that's how they. Uh, feel that the uh, path and ferries will take it. There will be a, a bus from Broad Street Station in Newark that will take it to Port Authority as long as the tunnel's not clogged. Um, they are adding light rail from Broad Street, which is Newark Station again to Penn. If you wanted to, instead of going to Hoboken, take the light rail and take the path train from Penn Station, Newark. The path schedule will increase from running every seven minutes to every five minutes, and they're also adding a ferry boat that will run to 39th Street, which will make a ferry boat running every 15 minutes. So for those, uh, and it doesn't sound like much is going to change um, between now and um, July 5th, so or July 10th, so uh, all those that have to commute into uh, New York, our thoughts are with you, and uh, hope we can get through this, uh, as it's been called, the summer of hell. Um, Somewhat related, on a more, much lighter note, uh, I attended uh, the Central Avenue School Bike Rodeo. Lieutenant Longo gave me a call and invited me to come and join. It was a great event with um, students learning a chance to learn about bicycle safety, have their helmets checked, had their bikes checked by Hilltop uh, Bicycle, asked some police registered bikes, and then the police uh, led a bike ride for the older students down Central and around um, Waverly Place, which I was able to join them. Um, a little scary, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I uh, delivered a proclamation to uh, Rob Schof, the pastor at uh, Madison United Methodist Church, for 25 years in Madison already. And for those that are familiar with uh, most churches, and Methodist Church in particular, 25 years is a very long time for someone to stay in one place. And so it was a great honor to recognize him and also recognize his wife, Kathy, for, for her work and she's also done for the church and her years at Morristown Medical Center. Um, so Madison and the church is a far better place for Rob Schof and Kathy for being part of our town. Also in the three weeks, we, uh, people went to the movie theater on Memorial Day, and on the day after, they were tearing down the posters. So sadly, the movie theater closed. It was Bowtie Cinema's decision to call and cancel their lease. They were on a month-to-month -month lease, and they needed minimum notice to their landlord, so they notified the landlord after the last showing on uh, Monday to say they would not be staying into uh, June. So it is quite a loss and a, a lot of memories for those that grew up in this town of that great theater. We'll see what the future brings. Another thing that happened over the last few weeks is um, a bit of buzz around the name The Rose City coming from a presentation from our um, urbanomics, and we'll be hearing more about the update of urbanomics uh, and our uh, downtown study. But I just want a few comments on that so we can kind of put that to uh, rest, the name Rose City. You know, a couple of things to keep in mind with consultants. They're, what makes them effective is when they're not too close to what they're studying. For us, if you, get, you can't see the forest for the trees, you can't see the roses for the blossoms, whatever it is, but if you are too close to it, it gets difficult. So you bring people from the outside to give a fresh view. But once they give it a fresh view, there's two things you gotta watch with any report. One, 
that you don't blindly follow the report, everything that's in there, because a lot of things are thrown on the board and you see what sticks. And number two is you don't ignore it and put it on the shelf. You study it and we'll, as I said, we'll hear about that shortly and implement the things that are good for Madison. So this is what I shared with a um, person who sent me an email and it did show up on um, Facebook. The discussion of the Rose City name came part of a downtown revitalization study in the context of marketing businesses. As with all studies that result in recommendations, many things are thrown up on the board, as I just said, and not all stick. While our staff and volunteers will be working on ways to attract non-residents who are downtown, no recommendation that would include dropping Madison, the Rose City, will stick to that board. All longtime Madisonians know very well the impact Madison's Rose industry has had on our community. The greenhouses are long gone, but we feel the Rose impact today, not just in frequent use of Rose City and business names, but in our street names, Older homes in many neighborhoods came from the Rose industry. The stories our older residents tell and the ethnic diversity that Madison has enjoyed for more than a century is all part of what came from being the Rose City. The Rose City is our history, our heritage, our bloodline, and we will never let anyone forget it. And just shifting to uh, Employee of the Month for June is Donna Carey of the Water and Light Billing Department for her commitment and hard work to implement new electric dividend program, which all our residents are enjoying. Come down here to do a proclamation, and then also we're going to have a uh, swearing in. We'll have a, a resolution to pass. Can I have Vincent Siccarelli up here, please? And Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Chief, you want to come up? Auxiliary Chief, come on up. Boy, your own cheering section. <laughs> This is a uh, very special proclamation recognizing many, many years of dedicated service. Whereas the Madison Auxiliary Police under the supervision of the Chief of Police consists of members who are volunteers that dedicate countless hours to the borough as a re source of additional manpower at special events such as parades and festivals, as well as increased traffic and crowd control, such as the days after Sandy. And whereas Vincent Siccarelli and his wife, Tina, moved to Madison in 1960, where they raised their four children, two daughters, Lena and Sandra, and two sons, Louis and Mario, and a host of other fans. <laughs> <laughs> and whereas, familiar with the military and police activities from his training and service in local police in Italy, Vincent was asked to join the Madison Auxiliary Police by Captain Joe Shalanza. And whereas, formally installed in the Auxiliary Police in January 1971. Vincent has, devoted, has been a devoted and active member serving at parades and special events in the borough of Madison. And whereas progressing to the rank of Sergeant during his tenure, Vincent has proudly served the Madison Auxiliary Police for 46 years. Now therefore I, Robert H. Conley, the Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend thanks and appreciation to Vincent Siccarelli for his efforts and dedication and commitment to the residents of Madison for all these years. Thank you so much.
Vince, on behalf of a grateful department, governing body, and citizens of Madison, uh, I just I can't thank you enough for your dedication for the past 46 years. I want you to know I was only three years old when you swore yourself <laughs> every hand on the Bible. Gas was 40 cents and the stamp was 8 cents, so your longevity is incredible. Um, there's one thing Vince had for the past 46 years on any traffic post, whether in the snow, rain, heat, he had that infectious smile, and it's going to be missed. And Sarge, I know you're hanging up your badge tonight, but our door is always open. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I understand. Thank you. May I have a motion for resolution R 166 2017, the resolution of the Borough of Madison appointing Edward O'Donnell as Auxiliary Police Officer for the Borough of Madison. I'll move it. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Edward O'Donnell, please come forward. Where is he? There we go. So before you, we swear you in, how, how old are you? 26, so let's see. Anyway, so you'll be uh, 72 years old. Okay, we'll be, I, I, I won't be here to give you the proclamation now, but. <laughs> Would you like to have hold the Bible, please? Okay. Raise your right hand. You want to hold it too? Come on in there. It takes two to hold the Bible. Repeat it. Repeat after me. I, Edward o O'Donnell. I, Edward O'Donnell. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Auxiliary police officer. Auxiliary police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments. And to the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome aboard. <laughs> okay, before you step away, you gotta make the official and sign your looking for you next to me event. Thank you, Ed. We'll let them filter out and we'll get back to our reports.
One more minute. We can't. Yeah, we, yeah. We'll uh, speak loudly and. All right. Reports from committees. Public Works and Engineering. Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. So we have a major project going on right now. Um, as you can see outside, uh, the, the sidewalks are all being done by um, Cefeli Contracting. And along with it, they're placing uh, conduits to, for the improved historic lighting that's going to be going in. So um, it, it's nice to get those sidewalks done. Uh, they're absolutely in need of. Um, there's also going to be an, another major project going on, and they're initiating a, sing, a signal replacement work at Lawanica and Woodland intersection on or about June 22nd. So that intersection is going to look very different than it actually does. Um, uh, there, there are plans, if you're interested in seeing what's happening, um, I, I looked at them a little while ago, and I think that it's going to be much better. But this is something that's initiated by uh, the um, Mars, Mar, by Mars County. Um, uh, tonight, we're, we're going to um, approve a, uh, a resolution regarding the contracting on the excavating and the replacing of the, oil, of the soil at the rear of Hartley Dodge Memorial. It was a little bit more than was expected, um, but it was years of lots of gas tanks and oil tanks being there. So uh, that is about done. Um, happy news, we received uh, New Jersey DOT grant funding for Greenwood Avenue as part of the 2017 Municipal Aid Program and that's in the amount of $245,000. So when we do uh, Greenwood Avenue, we have a little money to start off with. Um, the National Water Main uh, completed videotaping of sewer uh, mains on 12 additional uh, streets this past week. Uh, you may see them. There are two truck, trucks like... Uh, um, and they're going through all the sewer lines, making sure there's no leaks and, and uh, whatever. So um, it, it's a very, very worthwhile um, uh, situation. So we'll find out if we have any problems, and then those problems will be taken care of. Um, if you get a minute, go up to the R uh, MRC and take a look at the, uh, the bleachers in the, the press box. Uh, that uh, should probably be completed. The foundation work is completed. Uh, the borough installed conduits for electric power to the new press box, and the seating work is scheduled to start this week. So everybody's going to have uh, some good seating uh, up there. Um, I have a report from the Building and Construction Department. It's probably one of the busiest departments that we have going right now, but their building permits that they issued are up over 5 by 15% over 2016 already. Inspections completed are, are up by 15% over 2016, and the year-to-date revenue is $807,623. This time last year, it was $204,000. In the month of May, this, uh, this construction department probably served 1,911 people, so it's wow. a very, very busy place, very efficient as well. Um, from DPW, uh, all the mechanics took time out for training this past month. The, the, the training was uh, done by the GIF, uh, the Joint Insurance Fund, uh, did all that training. Um, they've been working very hard on getting all scheduled repairs on, on police vehicles, um, and Lou Cornine is working on, on, on getting the inventory down there in, in a good possible way. And um, Chris McDougall, we have to give credit where something is due, Chris McDougall repaired a soccer goal uh, that had been vandalized, and he did a great job, and he fixed it up. So now what we're seeing is that we're seeing the, uh, the plants being watered downtown every day during the heat wave. Um, 
when uh, we had all that rain, they, they had to catch up on the mowing and the weed whacking, and that's being taken care of. Um, the road department has been busy with the farmer's market setup. Uh, they're working with the sewer department on roadway prog uh, programs. They assisted the water department on leaks and water breaks, and um, they are continually uh, assisting with setting up for uh, and filling potholes and doing patchwork. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of work that's being done on various storm inlets. Uh, there's a manhole replacement going on in Central Avenue and Kings Road, and they also helped with the pool drain the pipes and the water runoff. So there's a lot going on. Um, I, I just want to, uh, again, say thank you to Patriotic Celebration Committee. Um, I'm their liaison, and it's, uh, it, it's a great committee of, of a bunch of wonderful uh, veterans, uh, from, uh, Viet mostly from the Vietnam War, and they're the most patriotic people I've ever met. And, um, you know, they, they just worked really hard on this particular parade, and we were disappointed again. But um, as the mayor said on Memorial Day, it was quite an honor to see everybody not worry about a parade, but actually come to honor. So the, um, you know, downstairs was really filled up. Uh, there was standing room only uh, at that point. So we have a lot of people honoring our veterans and the dead. Um, on June 14th, which is Wednesday night, we'll be rededicating and honoring the Borough of Madison there's a, a, a new flagpole that has just gone up that the Patriotic Celebration Committee has been working on. And um, the electric department, the, the guys from DPW, lots of people have helped. But uh, it's a rededication and an honor to Madison Borough because after the war in 1945, barracks were brought in and Madison was one of the few towns that said, our veterans need a place to live until they found jobs and they found permanent housing. So we will be dedicating that flagpole to them at 5.30. So come on down, if you'd like, right on Myrtle Avenue. It's the, the flagpole is in between all the Lucy D. Anthony fields. So thank you. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. From the fire department, during the month of May, the fire department responded to 24 general alarms, 16 still alarms, 26 investigations, and 63 medical calls for a total of 129 responses. Uh, there were also two departmental drills. Lieutenant Kevin Williams completed his fire officer class and passed the New Jersey State exam. Volunteer firefighter Brian Castano completed his 165 hours of Firefighter 1 training and passed his Firefighter 1 state exam. On Tuesday, May 23rd at 3.11 a.m., firefighters was dispatched to a home on court place for a reported oil leak. The occupants of the home were awakened by the strong <coughs> odor of heating oil. There was an above ground 275 gallon home heating oil tank still in use in the basement of the home that had developed a leak. Approximately 100 gallons of heating oil had leaked from what appeared to be a rusted hole in the bottom of the steel tank. Firefighters were able to plug the hole and stop the leak. Morris County Hazmat and New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection responded to the scene to help assist the homeowner with the cleanup process. In recent weeks, the fire department had to use their vehicle extrication skills. On Wednesday, May 3rd at 5.20 p.m., firefighters had to extricate two people that were stuck in their overturned vehicle. The vehicle was involved in a two-car motor vehicle accident at the intersection of Kings Road and Madison Avenue. On Friday, June 2nd at 9.05 p.m., firefighters had to extricate the driver from a vehicle that was on its side. The vehicle had struck a parked car on Woodland near Orchard and came to arrest on the driver's side door. And then finally on May, on Monday, June 5th at 9.53 p.m., firefighters had to lift the car off a person. The driver had pulled into the parking spot at quick check and when they attempted to exit the vehicle, the vehicle rolled backwards, pinning the driver under the car. In all three of the above incidents, the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps transported the patients to the hospital. Thank you, Mayor. Finance and Borough Clerk, Ms. Bailey. Um, that's, mm. That was a lot to follow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, from the payroll department, um, the borough has uh, installed new time clocks in the various borough buildings, and um, there has been training for the staff 
and the borough, um, everybody, we appreciate the cooperation of the borough staff of, of during this transition. From the tax collector's office, as was the case last year, the tax collector's office is expecting to mail out the 2017-18 <laughs> tax bills in early J July. The tax collector cannot mail the bills out until the county has certified the tax rate. Residents will be notified as soon as the bills have been mailed. The tax collector's office also wanted to remind residents that the state of New Jersey has three tax relief programs. They include the property tax free program, the homestead benefit program, the senior citizen slash disabled deduction. So please visit the tax relief programs page, which is part of the tax collector, collector's section of Rosenet for more details. From the Finance Department, the auditor visited the borough last month and a draft of the audit has been completed. The document will be reviewed by staff and the audit committee and once complete will be distributed to the council and posted on Rosenet. And finally, the CFO is completing a report on the Open Space Trust Fund um, for the first five months of 2017 and that will be distributed to the council shortly. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Please, <coughs> Mr. Volkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, Water Department would like you to know that uh, Well D is back online. The last step in getting it back was to test it for bacteria. It passed, so we're good to go. We are going. Um, besides that, the Water Department had 114 requests for locating and marking underground utilities. They had a couple of curb boxes that needed to be shut off. They had 28 meter installations. And, and again, as I read this to you, I'm always amazed that such a small department gets so much accomplished. Um, there are also a number of consumer issues with water leaks. Uh, there were curb setups that had to be changed. There was a consumer complaint about a smell in the water, which was resolved. Uh, and they did flow testing for fire line calculations, which is an important event to do. The uh, other thing I'd like to bring you up to date on are automated meters. We've been talking about this for quite a while, and the day has finally come. We will receive the first batch. These are new meters that are compatible with automated reading and handheld devices. The Electric Utility Department will be installing these meters in the next coming weeks. The Export-Import Script, i.e. the software, has been written, which will allow the data from the billing software to be exported into the handheld devices. And the software that controls the devices is scheduled to be installed this Wednesday. Training on the handheld devices is scheduled for the second week of July. So fairly soon, we expect to see our meter readers with these handheld devices. It'll obviously be a tremendous uptick in efficiency and accuracy of our billing process. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Health, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, the State Department of Health conducted its annual audit of the Madison Health Department on May 23rd. Uh, on Tuesday, June 20, 20th at 7.30 at the Civic Center, there will be a public hearing for the massage establishment licensing um, at a, the uh, regular Board of Health meeting. Uh, the Health Department continues to present food handling courses with the most recent event held on June 8th at one of our contract towns in Springfield. Twelve uh, handling personnel from various establishments participated. Food establishment owners and their staff are encouraged to attend this important informative training. Uh, more dates will be scheduled. Uh, inspections have been performed at the farmer's market and will be ongoing. All vendors are in full compliance with health rules and regulations. And also from uh, their work with MASA, uh, participation at the farmer's market on June 8th with information about substance abuse was pre presented. Uh, the Torrey J Elementary School participated in a traffic safety town, which was put on by trans options. Students learned the rules of the road for all drivers, pedestrians, and bikers. And finally, a presentation at the high school about alcohol, communication skills, self-esteem, and peer pressure was done. And additionally, on Wednesday, May 24th, I attended the uh, freeholder meeting that was held in East Hanover. It was a fairly light agenda. The only real uh, interesting item was a change in the operator of the county train lines, which really does not impact Madison. Thank you. Thank you. And community affairs, Ms. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last but not least, <clears throat> from the Senior Center, our new Senior Director, Sarah Keffer, has been busy meeting with seniors, library staff, and adult school volunteers to coordinate upcoming programs for Madison senior citizens. On this Wednesday, the seniors will be meeting at McCool's, 
either take the van or meet there for some ice cream and socializing with Sarah. On August 10th, there will be a van trip to the Great Swamp for an afternoon stroll on the boardwalks. Cameras are encouraged. Sarah is also working on a spreadsheet of all those who utilize the center for better communication programs and trips at the center. From the DDC, the market has been operating for two weeks and is starting out strong. We have new vendors joining our returnees. Cold brewed coffee is on the list, as well as the return of the Chamber's Look Good, Feel Better booth. Um, music at 4.45 to 5.45 every week. Come on down, buy your lettuce, and enjoy some great music. Uh, the Public Improvements Committee met last Wednesday with Ken O'Brien, Director of Public Works, for a walk through downtown. Areas for improvement were identified, as well as the possible placement of a new water fountain at the corner of Waverly and Lincoln Place. From the Chamber of Commerce, the Chamber held its annual awards dinner on Monday, June 5th. Over 100 people were in attendance at the Madison Hotel. Awards given out that night were Most Creative Window to the Blue Pearl, Best Innovative Concept to Redux, 2017 Best New Building, Keeneland Latman Sotheby's International Realty, 2017 Outstanding Building Preservation, St. Vincent Martyr Church, 2017 Appreciation Award, Short Stories Bookshop and Community Hub, Cornerstone Business Award, B. Henderson of San Francisco Mercantile. She's been at San Francisco since 1979. Um, the Extra Mile Award, was, uh, which recognizes uh, customer service, was awarded to the Bar Method of Madison and Robin Salmeri of Cleaners Advantage. And finally, the Distinguished Service Award was given uh, to Lisa Ellis in recognition of all she does for the downtown. Uh, from the Recreation Committee, the spring schedule is winding down this weekend, and we've started transitioning to the summer schedule. For the fifth consecutive year, the MRC will again be host to the Jersey Strong Lacrosse Showcase, held on MRC 1 and 2 this Wednesday from 3.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. It will feature some of the best lacrosse in New Jersey. Madison High School's own championship team will be playing. Um, as Mrs. Vital mentioned, the MRC One Bleacher and Press Box project is progressing on schedule with completion expected within uh, weeks. The foundation is complete, and the borough installed conduits for electric power to the press box last week. Seating work is scheduled to begin today. Um, delivery of the MRC Two Bleachers is expected, is expected this month as well. The reseeding of the skating rink has been completed. Please refrain from walking on the field to allow the seed to take. And the lacrosse wall at MRC2 is in the process of receiving quotes. This year is the 40th year of the Nature Nuts program, which begins on June 26th at Memorial Park. Pre-registration will be held in the Memorial Park Picnic Grove on Sunday, June 25th from 1 to 3 p.m. Registration will be open throughout the week of June 26th from 9 to 2. And finally, from the Community Garden, the Community Garden will be sponsoring an Open Gates event to introduce the garden and beehives on June 14th and 15th. Additionally, with the help of an Open Spaces Trust Fund grant, a pollinator garden has been established to sustain the bee colonies. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We'll report on our welcoming uh, community uh, meeting on June 1st. Our borough attorney, Mr. Giacobbe. Uh, we met on June 1st with a group of residents. Um, Following the meeting, we've updated the fre frequently asked questions found on the uh, borough's website. Uh, the two primary issues that were addressed were, um, does the welcoming resolution constitute qualifying Madison as a san sanctuary city? And it does not. Um, to be a sanctuary city, you have to uh, be a jurisdiction that's going to violate a federal law. It's called 8 U.S.C. 1373. Our resolution says that we comply with all state and federal laws. Um, 
And so we do not qualify as a sanctuary city whatsoever. And that has now been reiterated by court decisions, uh, the Director of Homeland Security, et cetera, says that that is the, what constitutes a sanctuary city when they know at least they're going to violate that, that law. The other issue that came up was whether or not we're providing benefits in violation of federal law. And that statute is 8 U.S.C. 1621. Again, the welcome resolution says we comply with all state and federal law. What that law does is it prohibits uh, state or local governments from giving out certain benefits to um, non, or immig non legal immigrants. And those benefits would be uh, unemployment benefits, uh, housing allowances, health benefits. It goes through a whole list of it. The one thing that's exempted in that law is that states and towns can provide emergency disaster relief to people, they can provide immunizations, um, and they can also provide uh, medical assistance. So if somebody is injured, you don't ask their immigration status, you render them. And that's why hospitals take in anyone who walks in the door, they treat them. That is not in violation of the 8 U.S.C. 1621. Uh, um, and we also talked about, you know, the, the both state and federal law mandate that uh, in K-12 districts, you can't ask for immigration status. The child walks into that door and they are domiciled in your jurisdiction, they get an education and it would be illegal for you to ask for immigration status. So I think it was a, it was a very positive uh, meeting. People had concerns about it. Uh, I think we addressed the, their concerns of, and I think people um, walking away can agree to disagree, but I, I think that overall the, it was a, a good tenor and a good meeting with all the residents, and they were very, they had very thoughtful questions, and uh, we, that's why we went back and updated the FAQ so that people can be assured that we did not establish a sanctuary city. Thank you, and thank you for uh, spending, coming in support and uh, doing the follow up on that. Really appreciate it. Communications and petitions. And none received, Mayor. Okay, this is the first of two invitations for discussion. This one is limited to. The two agenda discussion items, utility ordinance amendments and the downtown revitalization study or any resolution that is listed on the consent agenda. If you wish to comment on any of those, step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, write the same on the clipboard, and then state the, um, the agenda discussion or the resolution you're speaking about, and then try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. I will give you a one-minute warning at the three-minute point and then stop you at four. Anyone wishing to comment on agenda items or the resolutions, please step <coughs> forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we move on to agenda discussions, utility ordinance amendments. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one minor change to uh, Ordinance 30 was just distributed to uh, the Council and it's posted on the board. It's literally just a few sentences. One of my responsibilities um, as CFO is working with the staff uh, to make the utility more um, run like a business and more functional. And uh, with that, I met with Employee of the Month, Donna Carey. I met with others, um, formed a working committee, Mike Piano, Tom DiBias, myself, Jim Trimble, the meter reader, and other staff to go through the ordinances to make sure there weren't any conflicts and to clean things up and to um, uh, make things a little more clear. Uh, I'll go through some of the changes here um, so the public knows it's a big ordinance, but council received track changes so they can see the minor wordsmithing that has occurred in there. Under, elect, under Ordinance 29, which deals with the electric utility, um, the primary change there is the change in the billing cycle. Um, in that ordinance, it stated that the billing cycle, a bill would be issued and it would be due in 30 days. Uh, the problem with that is April and other months that don't have 30 days. So um, April, if we issued a bill on April 1st, it was due in 30 days. It was due in May 3rd. Typically what happens is April 1st, that bill would be from book one, and every month on the first of the month, you would get your bill. So you would actually get a bill in May 1st, 
and you hadn't even paid for your April bill. So there was an um, unnecessary overlap, and so um, we looked at what other utilities do. Best practices have 25 days for uh, the payment uh, when a bill is due. So we've asked for that change in here so we don't have that um, conflict with overlap. Um, in addition, we asked for um, the creation uh, within this ordinance of uh, permitting the CFO with advice and consent of the attorney and the administrator to create policies. We have policies in place for when shutoffs occur, but we don't have them um, uh, codified in any way. The creation of this policy and procedure will allow us to do it, will give us some flexibility. Um, as a standard practice right now, a shutoff would occur if someone was delinquent over 90 mm -hmm. days and over $500 in their bill. So uh, that's the type of policy that we want to be able to put down in writing, not codified in the ordinance, but that the ordinance permits these policies, which would be um, drafted, approved by the attorney and the administrator, and posted. Um, I'll go through all of the ordinances, and then if you have any questions, you can let me know. Electric uh, Utility Ordinance 29, Michael Piano had a number of very small changes to make sure it was clear who was responsible when uh, there was new construction. And uh, another important change was uh, what would happen if someone were to tamper or uh, attempt to modify the meter or attempt to tamper in any way with their connection. We right now have no penalty if that were to occur other than to turn someone off. And we had an incident where there was a developer, a builder who had a house, the meter was pulled by our utility, and they decided they wanted electricity back on, and they went and got a meter from PSE and and stuck it on. <laughs> then our meter reader went by and goes, what, what, what's going on here? So uh, there's no penalty that we could um, uh, give that person, and we couldn't even mm. measure the amount of electricity that that, um, that that customer used during that time. The, I think the resident realized it, but the builder, um, uh, the, the contractor had done that. So we're, in there, there's a penalty in case someone were to do something like that. It's also very dangerous because we're thinking the electricity is cut off, shut off and now it's not shut off. So um, there's that change. Under the water utility, with the help of um, uh, Foreman Tom DiBias and Jim Trimble and Donna Carey, we went through and made some changes. Same changes to the delinquency policy and the billing cycle to make sure that it was uh, 25 days. Um, there uh, is currently no penalty if uh, the resident does something and limits the access to the meter. We've actually had people who inadvertently had a contractor come in and put <coughs> wall, and now we can't even get to the water meter anymore. So, um, so there needs to be a penalty so we can say, we need access to this water meter within X amount of days or we're going to issue a penalty. There was no nothing there, and we had an incident where that occurred. All these, all these changes are due to actual real things that have happened over the last few years. Um, we also have a situation where we charge a very nominal amount for temporary water. Um, actually, you can see it right on Maple Avenue, the property right on the corner there. You'll just see a, a stub coming up for a water spigot. There's no meter on it. Typically, that makes sense, especially if you're concerned in the wintertime where a pipe could freeze um, and a meter could be damaged or, for freezing. So we typically just charge a fixed fee for temporary water. The problem is it's $35, and that's $35 for Janet Foster's little lot there on the corner of Maple Avenue, and it's $35 for the KRE development over at Green Village Road. So we need to change that. So this allows us to charge um, a larger amount based on um, the number of residential units or the size of the square footage. Also allows us to now install a temporary meter if we determine that we want to install a temporary meter. And then finally, um, large commercial um, customers um, in the water utility actually own their own water meter. So Geralda Farms, Drew University, the Board of Education, and others actually own their own water meters. This tightens up the regulations on testing because they have to test their water meters every, um, on a frequent basis every two years and tightens up the regulations if their water meters fail, how quickly they have to repair it so we know we're measuring um, the water correctly. That's a summary of all the changes. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. As I said, mostly ministerial to make the department um, run more efficiently. I guess the one question is for the people, like you just mentioned at the very end, will we be notifying them when we make this change that that is now going to be on them so they're aware? Yes. I understand that people are supposed to know the law, but. Yes, so when we notify them, we'll notify them first to say, 
you need to test your meter, which is something that we do, we notify them, it's time to test your meter, here are the new regulations, you need to provide us with all this information, the test result needs to be this, this is what passes, this is what fails, if it fails, you need, you, first of all, you need to test within a certain period of time, we're not going to wait six months for the test to come back, it's got to come back, and, and alike, they'll be notified, yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions on that? All right. Thank you. So there's the ordinance 28 and 30, or 29 mm -hmm. and 30, that are listed for introduction. 28, 29, and 30, I'll get it right. <coughs> downtown, downtown revitalization study. Ben. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I wanted to bring you all up to date on what's happened since our last meeting when we had the presentation by Urbanomics of the report. Um, I, I was going to start off in much the same spirit of the mayor's comments on this. I would have added to uh, the Rose City issue, the one about parking. I, I, what we got was a very brief discussion of a, a much more extensive review of the parking situation in Madison that's contained in the study. So uh, I won't go into more detail on that. Let me just uh, say that there may well be controversial proposals that come out of the work of the various committees that are involved now, but they're not going to be just talked about at a meeting and, told, and, and you'll all be told they're putting in, being put in place. There'll be more than ample opportunity for public comment, which we would welcome and hope to get. So uh, we won't change, we won't strike the Rose City from our motto, and um, we won't ignore traffic, I mean, parking issues uh, without at least giving you some time to talk to us back and tell us what we're doing wrong. Um, I, I want to start by just saying Urbanomics grouped their recommendations in four categories, but subsumed under one of them is, is a category that the uh, Committee on the Revitalization of Downtown as well as the Downtown Development Commission found to be extremely important. And that is the recommendation to hire a full-time salaried downtown manager. This is something that's been kicked around in the past. We've had people in this role part-time. We've had people in this role as volunteers. The issues in town, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on the commercial and corporate side are large enough to merit having someone in the role full-time, and that person would be reporting to our borough administrator. At this stage, what's happened is we've constituted a search committee, and a job description is in the very final stages. As soon as it's completed, which I would hope would be in the next few days, we will advertise the position and go through the usual process of, of identifying and hiring someone to fill that post. And we obviously look forward to getting this done as quickly as possible. The uh, first major of the four categories, the first major one had to do with marketing and branding. And this is something that the DDC has been working on for some time. They continue to make good progress. They have, social, they have applied some of the social media uh, applications quite well and focused on our downtown. But we all are of a mind that we need some outside assistance in this regard. Uh, there are professionals involved, as you all know, in marketing and branding issues, and we really do need their advice. Uh, the thinking of the group was that we ought not to go to that route until we have that downtown manager in place. That this would be a, a, an initial and important responsibility of the manager. On the zoning and development side, um, the planning board recently reviewed the urbanomics recommendations. There was clarification of several of the issues that were brought up. Some of the groundwork was laid out on what needs to be done to implement these recommendations. The next step would be to get other relevant committees involved, and that will happen shortly. The third one is the uh, famous parking issue, which we actually believe are two famous parking issues, one of them having to do with our commuters who have difficulty parking in, in the lots that are assigned, and the other has to do with parking in general in our downtown area. And uh, you, you may not know this, but over the last decade or so, this has been one of the more studied problems of our town. There have been approximately five studies on the subject. There have been some minor tweaks. We are looking to do much more than minor tweaks. 
Um, stay tuned. We're, we're first going to try some, some of the uh, recommendations that Urbanomics came up with that are really, a, a, as is supposed to use, a, a unfortunately cliched way of looking at it, low-hanging fruit and see to what extent they make a difference uh, before we go on to something much more dramatic. And then the final group of recommendations was under the um, heading of placemaking, uh, which I always like to think of as the making of the place, but however you speak of it, what it considers and what's under it are uh, such issues as street furniture, which by and large means lights and benches, but not entirely, signage, and the use of public spaces. Um, these are rather important. We, I don't know how some of you feel about this, but there are some of us who think that signage is a little out of control and uh, different formats, different kinds of signs. If, you are, if you're new here, you might not easily find our parking lots, right, because the signs identifying them are, are petite, <laughs> if I may use that term, a little on the small side for what they're pointing to. So there's work to be done in these areas. Uh, a lot of them will have to be preceded by the branding and marketing issues, especially the branding, because that'll set a tone for a lot of the things that we will then put in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. We will then put in place, um, and, and again, some of these will have to wait for a, a downtown manager to be in place, although we do think we can make some progress on a number of these issues in the meanwhile. So to summarize, we've had three groups get involved since the presentation. The Committee on the for the Revitalization of the Downtown, which in effect operate as a steering committee for this effort, the Downtown Commission, and the Planning Board. And, and this is obviously just the beginning. I personally am optimistic that we'll be taking action reasonably soon. I don't want to make date commitments. We're not at that stage yet. But this is, for me, this is not going to be a multi-year project. As, as we said at the outset, our primary objective was not to have yet another report. Our primary objective was to have actionable recommendations. And we believe we have them. We're not going to adopt them all. But they get us thinking in the right direction. And some of them really are quite good. And, we'll, and we will adopt them. I just want to say one last thing, and that is, um, that is, as with many efforts in the borough, uh, it, the benefit of volunteers cannot be overestimated. And I would like to thank all of the many volunteers who've been involved to date. There's no question that without their help, we wouldn't have gotten this far. So you know who you are. I don't want to read uh, the entire list. It would take too long. But uh, my thanks to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or Bob? Yeah, Ben, just real quick. Um, you know, I always viewed the towns that surround us as our neighbors, but they were also our competitors for businesses. Of those towns, would you, how many, I don't know if you know the exact number, how many of them have a downtown manager? Well, we, we, certainly Summit does. Right. Right. I, Marstown? Uh, Marstown does. Um, Chatham Borough, I don't believe, does. Florham Park? Borough Help. Does. The borough does? Yeah. I didn't know the borough does. Full time? Yes, she does. All right, take it back. Works, oh, that's right. Works of course, I know who that time, is. But she has several. <clears throat> yes, I know who that is. Well, the so, reality of it is this downtown manager would put us in a better position to, to compete with our competitors, even though they're our neighbors. Yes. We'll be competing with them to get people into our town to use our businesses. That's the objective. Yeah. And, 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 you know, just to get to your point, this would not be an unusual thing for a town of our size. Yeah. And any other questions or comments? Pat? Uh, I agree with Bob. I think we need a downtown manager, but I thought we would have discussed it first before we agreed to go ahead with it. And we also would have seen a job description, because I think that's the critical thing. And I, I actually was hoping that Urbanomics was going to provide that. And they did make the recommendation we hire somebody, but not give us really the scope of the job. So um, is it possible for us to at least see what the job description is going Absolutely. to be? Absolutely. I, I can't give it to you tonight because it isn't complete. That's fine. But, yeah. But the intent is to distribute it before we go out and try and hire someone, at least to council members and, of course, to the search committee. Okay. Yeah, I noticed there was a search committee. I thought yeah. you should probably have the job description first, but okay. no, no, We will. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, we're working on the we, – we are working on the job description. Mm -hmm. And we've had input from the, the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, there has – 
been no search committee s established yet, but oh, it okay. will be, yeah. So it, oh. it'll come to the council. Well, a, a minor tweak. Yeah. The, the, the members of the search committee know who they are. Okay. And they will be receiving this job description in an effort to make sure that everyone's comfortable with it and does what it says. The council will receive it. We'll accept comments from the council, of course. And at that point, we look to publish it and go ahead with the search. Uh, Timing-wise, would looking at you know if we had it distributed before the next council meeting, where there could be uh, two weeks might be on the tight side, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, or, or yeah, not much, not much longer than that. Okay. So if, that would be a good target if we could stay on. Yes. Are we going to be formalizing all these committees, or are they just being formed by the group itself? The, the, well, the search committee is primarily employee. There's a couple for the volunteers, but we can, um, since it, it does include some volunteers, we can confirm that at the uh, okay. next council meeting also. Just like to keep track of all the committees and yep. who's on them. Yep. Thank you. The only new one would be the search committee to date. Okay. Well, you said there was a series of committees. I mean, I know the DDC exists, the planning board exists. And I guess the revitalization commission committee is the that, one. That's the committee that's been working on the. Yeah, right. they, that was the committee that okay. hired Urbanomics. And yep. Okay. Or re recommended the hiring of Urbanomics. Yes. We, we voted. Sorry, recommended. We hired Urbanomics. <laughs> okay, any other comments or questions? There are no ordinances for hearing, so now we are on to the second invitations for discussion. This, you, you may comment on any topic. Same rules apply that uh, try to keep your comments to three minutes, but I'll give you a one minute warning at the three minute mark. Please uh, write your, state your name, your address, and write the same on the clipboard, and then we'll start the time. Welcome. Thank you for allowing this. Mayor? My name is Jesse Esposito. I live on Community Place, and I'm here to discuss the parking. Again, um, I appeared here two months ago um, about a request to have this uh, situation rendered uh, livable, which it isn't. Uh, we have business people parking on Community Place. Uh, you have residents of the housing that park there 24-7. I want to show you pictures, if I may, about all the cars that are parked there where emergency vehicles cannot get down there because both sides of the road are completely blocked. Um, we did discuss, I did discuss with the police and DPW about doing one side of the street, no parking and four hour limit on the other side of the street. Um, apparently a neighbor had an issue with the parking, no parking being on his side, so I have spoken with the landlady who owns both houses um, towards the end by the housing authority. Um, and uh, she agreed with me that we could do the no parking on our side of the street rather than across the street and allow them for our parking and no parking um, to the um, dead end sign, which goes back to the housing back there. It is a constant problem. My family can't come and visit me without parking two blocks away because we have the residents from the housing authority parking there and you have the business owners parking there. And um, I've had to call the police on numerous occasions because they block my driveway and I can't get in and out. So I am addressing you again and asking you please can we do something about community place? Thank you. Appreciate you coming back again. So just to get some up. Sir, I will keep coming back until I get some satisfaction. That, that, <laughs> that is your right, and we certainly uh, expect that to happen. To make um, right. So a couple of uh, Ray that will follow up is uh, we did talk about the fact that we have the, the four-hour um, Exactly. All in place, and so we should be enforcing that. We were waiting on a recommendation from the police department on ordinance on the one side. Um, and so well, because um, the gentleman at the house on the corner of Cook and Community, um, I think Taylor is the last name, um, he complained, pulled up the signs. The police did put emergency no parking there. He did pull out the signs and bring them to Officer Lisa 
whatever her last name is, Esposito, like I thought that was it, yeah. and uh, said, I don't want this. So there was an issue with him. So if he doesn't want it on his side of the street, <clears> let <throat> all the cars park there for four hours and keep our side clean, only because, again, it's a serious issue with emergency vehicles. Fire trucks can't get down there um, because it narrows down to like one lane going in and out of the housing, and they're parking all up and down the streets, both sides. Thanks. So it is an issue, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. So we'll, we'll see if we can do the temporary signs again and then come back to the ordinance. Yeah, on the other side of the street. <laughs> Terry Romano, West Lane. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the Council. I'd like to tell you that my husband and I have spent hundreds of dollars, lots of time, money, energy, trying to remove running bamboo that my backyard neighbor has planted, which is encroaching on my property. If you Google running bamboo, and I bet probably none of you have to do that because I think anybody that I've spoken to, and you mention that word, they go, it has a root system that is destructive. It spreads like wildfire. Nothing kills it. Fresh killer. You can pull the roots up. We've even tried putting down black, thick plastic to prevent it from popping up. It grows right through the plastic. Other towns have ordinances against it. Our neighbor's Florham Park has an ordinance against it. Last year, another Mes Madison resident proposed an ordinance to this council, Ordinance 54 2016, if you remember. It was a draft similar to the one in Florham Park. It was, I have an email here from Councilwoman Carmen Vitali that she was going to speak to the Environmental Commission about it. Apparently she did because it was on their September 29th agenda. However, I don't believe it was passed, and I'm wondering why. Just so you know, my back door neighbor sits on your planning board. So here's someone who we entrust to make the right decisions for our town. He's an architect. Planning an invasive species on the proper lo property line is unacceptable. He knows better. So I ask you, Mr. Mayor, and the council to revisit this proposal for an ordinance preventing the planting of running bamboo, ordinance number 54 2016. It's already been drafted. Thank you. And uh, Matt, is that something that the uh, Board of Health could also look at? Yes, the Board of Health could absolutely look at that. Um, because that's most of our property, pro property maintenance, virtually all our property maintenance code goes through the Board of Health, so that would be, okay. And they're very over responsive. To the Board of okay, so, so we will forward that, uh, copy that ordinance, and um, we can send the remarks also over to the Board of Health. Okay, thank you. Sam Romano, 29 West Lane. Um, I'll be very brief. First off, I'd like to thank you. I really commend what you're doing with the lights in front of the Borough Hall. Uh, I drive this every day to go to work in all, time, all the winter time. It's very dark. Those lights are beautiful, but they don't throw a lot of light. And when people are crossing from the parking lot to the train station in dark clothes, it's always been very, uh, I always thought it was a very dangerous part of Madison. So I think adding those lights is a great idea, and thank you all for doing that. Thank you. And I also want to thank you all for all your commitment to the town. Uh, a lot of faces in here I recognize. I know you guys spend a lot of time and effort, and I really appreciate all, all of what you do. And just real quick, like, it's real easy when everybody does the right thing. You know, Mayor Connolly, if I were your neighbor, I wouldn't play music beyond when I should or louder than I should because I respect you and respect the neighborhood. I wouldn't take a year off of cutting my grass for the same reasons, and I wouldn't plant something that I knew that was going to grow into your yard and not be able to con that you would not be able to control. Um, I, I look at your job as council to uh, serve the greater good and to protect the borough residents. Uh, and I think you guys do a nice job with that. 
So my question to you is very simple on whether it's to the borough council or if it has to be directed to the uh, Board of Health is does planting an invasive species like bamboo serve the greater good and protect the quality of life for the borough of Madison's residents? It's a pretty simple question. I won't take much of your time, so if the answer is yes, it does, it does protect the greater good, then you have to do nothing, which is basically what you've all done to this point. And unfortunately, ordinances and resolutions die a lot easier than bamboo does. I can't tell you, if I spray any more stuff on this bamboo, well, I'm gonna grow another toe. Okay, um, so I ask you, if you feel in your heart, you don't want it in your neighborhood, you don't want it next to your house, and your answer is no, it's not in the greater good, it doesn't serve the best interests of the town, then I ask you to please do the job that we all elect you to do and serve the greater good and protect the borough of Madison and come up with some kind of plan to prevent this invasive species from being... Uh, a nuisance and, and a hindrance and, and to diminish the quality of life of borough residents. Thank you. Thank you. We will also share your remarks to the Board of Health. Anyone else wishing to be heard, please step forward. Tom. Tom Abruzzo, uh, 52 Maple Avenue. Uh, I'm going to be, be very, very brief tonight. Just uh, um, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Uh, Giacobbe, I um, uh, want to comment on your, your earlier comments regarding our meeting. I want to first of all thank you for having the meeting, myself and the others who attended. We do appreciate uh, the communication and the dialogue, and uh, I think there was a lot of uh, um, good information provided during that meeting. Um, uh, just with respect to... Um, um, uh, Mr. Giacobbe's comments. Um, there were some, uh, he, he made some uh, summaries of some of the things that were discussed that night. Some of those things were legal related issues. Um, I'm not an attorney, so I really don't want to opine on that, although some of, as you know, some of the residents who were at that meeting were attorneys. So I think we would like to probably really circle back on some of, the, on some of his feedback and discuss that a little bit, and we probably will be back in touch with you through various communications uh, you know, over the next days or weeks or, next, or the next meeting. Sounds and good. And want to thank you for the opportunity to speak, um, to speak with you back on June 1st. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time again. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we come on to introduction of ordinance. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for June the 26th, 2017. It will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinance for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 28, 2017, ordinance of the borough of Madison amending chapter 94, attachment 2, appendix B, entitled payment of water and electric bills. Mayor, I move ordinance 28-2017. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Ordinance 29-2017, ordinance amending chapter 94, attachment 3, appendix C, entitled Electric Utility Department Rules and Regulations. Mayor, I move ordinance 29-2017. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. And Ordinance 30, 2017, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 190, entitled Water. Mayor, I move Ordinance 30-2017. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Ms. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full minutes. 
Mayor, I move resolution 167 2017 to resolution 184 2017. I'll second the motion. Any discussion or any of that need to be pulled? I just have to abstain from R184. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes to all abstain, R184. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Okay, there is no unfinished business. The approval of vouchers, please. Please read the voucher. The current fund is $3,707,245.06. General capital fund, uh, $358,165.57. Electric operating fund, uh, $611,160.31. Water operating fund, $8,149.18. And the trust, $32,441.74. The total is four million seven hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and sixty one dollars and eighty six cents. Mayor, I, I move approval of the vouchers. I second the motion. Any discussion? Questions? We'll call a vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. In new business, I'd like to make the following appointments requesting council confirmation. These are to the Community Garden Advisory Committee. Paul Schmidt of 104 Green Avenue, without any um, unexpired term through December 31st, 2018. <laughs> and Maureen Heflin at 11 Cedar Street, uh, unexpired term through December 31st, 2017. Mayor, I uh, move the following appointments. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. Do you want to? Oh, what do you want to know? I'm waiting for official information about how we're going to structure.